And in our world business news, Japanese automakers may continue to lose around $36 billion in revenues between April and June. According to, to Japan's Nikkei Financial Daily, the 57% fall in total production for March translates into a co combined revenue loss of $12 billion for the eight automakers in the country. And with many analysts predicting roughly the same shortfall for May and June, this adds up to $36 billion. The world's largest car maker Toyota saw a 63% fall in its March volumes and expects cuts to persist till the end of the year. Toyota is forecast to lose its crown to General Motors and fall behind Volkswagen to number three. Meanwhile, Honda's India unit is halving auto production because of a shortage of components following the March tsunami in Japan. Honda's plant outside the capital, New Delhi, will run on single shift starting in May. The company hopes to resume full production after July. The plant can turn out 100,000 vehicles a year, including the popular Honda City sedan. Honda has also had to cut production at its US and Canadian factories. Sony unveiled its first tablet computer today and by that taking a crucial step forward towards its ambitious goal of becoming the world's second biggest tablet maker after Apple. The Japanese company took its time with the market launch, emphasizing the need to, di to differentiate its tablets from others. Now Sony unveiled the market's first dual-screen tablet called the S2. It runs on Google's Android operating system. The company raised eyebrows in January when it said it was aiming to be the number two in the tablet market within a year. Reason being that it didn't even have a tablet on the market at the time. Competition is tough. Apple released its first iPad a year ago. Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao greeted Australian Prime Minister Julia Gillard in Beijing today to discuss trade relations between the two countries. The duo attended a signing ceremony where they reached agreements on customs operations, strengthening tourism ties, a joint agreement between science and ministries, Australia-China service sector promotions and an iron ore project. China buys more than a quarter of Australian exports, overtaking Japan as the country's largest trading partner in early 2009. China is currently the biggest consumer of Australian coal and iron ore. Two-way annual trade has passed 107 billion US dollars in 2010, up from 62 billion US dollars in 2009. Of course, our economic relationship is a vital one for Australia's national interest and it is growing in leaps and bounds. You can give any number of statistics to evidence the rate of growth, but to give you just one statistic, merchandise exports grew by 37% to nearly $60 billion last year. Uh, as a result, of course, a key focus of what I'm doing here in China is on our economic relationship. Before we head back to news, let's take a quick look at the Asian equity commodity and the currency markets. And after that, Laura Buckwell is back with the news.